Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today we are reading and reacting live to Chris Wilson's most recent post on Reddit about how we're developing our next expansion differently. This is officially by the lead developer Chris Wilson over at Grinding Gear Games. So let's read through. I have not had a chance to read through this myself, but let's read through this together and then react live. All right, let's jump right in. Chris begins by the following. This year has been tough for our team and has thrown a lot of unexpected challenges at us. This has caused us to adjust how we're developing Path of Exile, which will affect what's happening with our December expansion. From, from Path of Exile's release in 2013 until late 2015, we struggled to grow the community and were getting worried as the game's popularity started to slowly decline. We tried releases of many different sizes and cadences before eventually settling into a 13-week cycle with the launch of Talisman in December 2015. Since then, we have developed 19 leagues with this cadence and had a lot of success with it. Path of Exile grew exponentially and allowed us to put even more content into each expansion to meet the expectations of our growing community. I even presented a GDC talk on this process, which was very well received within the game development industry. I still receive mail every week from developers at other studios who feel that the talk was of great value for their teams. Things were going well, and we thought we knew exactly what we were doing. Then 2020 hit and exposed just how vulnerable our development process was to unexpected events. To some extent, we were lucky that a black swan event, such as a key team member leaving, hadn't caused similar disruption to our schedule before this. We want to preface this by saying that the government mandated lockdowns were not the root cause of the issues, but they had a significant impact and added to an already high pressure situation. Due to the way we've been developing expansions, we had almost no wiggle room to manage the additional overheads of lockdown. Even under the normal circumstances, some expansions were coming in quite close to the wire. There is a reasonable chance that we may experience another lockdown or some other unforeseen event that adds extra pressure, and we need to create a development plan that has enough breathing room to allow that to happen. After two lockdowns, we delayed Heist's release by a week, and it was still not enough to mitigate the combination of constrained resources and ambitious development scope, as Heist was by far the highest content league in Path of Exile's history. Adding to this pressure, our country's borders are closed, which means our international hiring is frozen for the foreseeable future. Which leads to the next issue. Regarding, regardless of how difficult pandemic pressures make development, it's genuinely hard to scope out how long Path of Exile expansions will take to develop. Some systems that appear easy to create end up taking several iterations to get right. Conversely, some things that felt like they'd be really hard just come, just come together quickly and work the first time. Usually, these over and underestimates average out during the development of an expansion, but sometimes you get ones that are developed a lot faster, Legion, or slower delve than usual. If you categorize Path of Exile releases into the good and the bad ones, you see a clear pattern of times when development took less or more time than expected. This shows that correct scoping and risk mitigation is critical to ensuring a good Path of Exile launch. Another important topic to discuss is that of feature creep. This is when the feature set of a piece of software gradually increases over time as developers think of more cool stuff to add, eventually causing production problems. This is, somewhat this is a somewhat common problem in software development. For example, there's a boss in Diablo 2 called Creeping Feature as a nod to this over 20 years ago. While, creeping, uh, while feature creep sounds like a terrible thing, it can often be great for making a game feel special. A lot of the stuff that makes Path of Exile special was added because of a developer thought of something cool and worked hard to squeeze it in a specific release. While feature creep can wreak havoc on a schedule, and hence the overall quality of an expansion at launch, it also, it's also important to make sure that developers have a way to still add those special touches that make the game feel like it has endless stuff to discover. 
We feel that this is best done in the planning phase rather than late in development when such changes can affect the quality of release. Late in Heist development cycle, we had a serious internal discussion about how we could restructure our development processes so that subsequent expansions are less risky. This discussion resulted in an experiment that we decided to try to carry out for the next three month cycle. We have defined a very specific scope for December's 3.13 expansion. It contains everything that a large Path of Exile expansion needs, but no more. I am personally handing the, handling the production of this expansion to make sure that no work creeps in that isn't in the planned scope. The schedule that we will hopefully achieve with this approach will likely have everything quite playable and ready for gameplay iteration before our marketing deadline and in a very stable and polished state by the time it is released. You heard it here. The schedule that we will hopefully achieve with this approach will likely have everything quite playable and ready for gameplay iteration before our marketing deadline and in a very stable and polished state by the time it is released. The positive consequences of this experiment are clear. If it succeeds, we will be able to deliver 313 on time with a strong stable launch, plenty of gameplay iteration and solid testing of features. If this experiment works as we expect it to, we'll be able to continue using it for future expansions, which will allow us to continue with our 13 week expansion cycle, which we strongly feel is best for the continued growth and long-term health of Path of Exile in the period before Path of Exile 2 is released. This experiment comes with some side effects. You'll definitely notice that the patch notes are much much shorter than they usually are. That's because we're focused on getting the most important changes done and doing them well. I'm aiming for us to try to fit the patch notes on just a few pages if we can manage it. This does mean that we have had to carefully, to be careful to pick our battles though. The balance changes we are doing have been carefully chosen to have the largest impacts and fix real problems. It's also likely that we'll front load the, the announcement to have more of the expansion's contents revealed at once, reducing the number of small teasers we post in the weeks following the announcement. That's fine by me. Our goal is that 3.13 takes 50% of the overall development hours of Heist, which means going from a situation with overtime to a situation with testing time. Wait. I would like some clarity on that because that, I don't think that's what you mean here, Chris, but it, what it sounds like, what it sounds like here is, hey, we didn't have testing time and we had overtime with development time. Is, is that what you mean? That you guys didn't have testing time for heist? M maybe that is what you mean. That's, that's what that sentence could be read as. Maybe I'm misreading that. Maybe I'm misreading that. And yet feels like a large December expansion. If you're interested, it's an Atlas expansion like War or Conquerors with an in-area combat league and with a few other bits and pieces. We'll be announcing it in a slightly different way than we usually do. Stay tuned. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thus, thus says Chris. All right, are there any comments on here from Chris? I don't think so. This is just two minutes ago. All right, so... Wow. There, there is a lot here. Should we go to paint? Can we get some paint emojis? Should we go to the paint, guys? Let's go to the paint. I feel like this needs some paint. Is this way, his way of apologizing for Heist and saying they won't let it happen again, says Sulfurus? I think, I think this is, I didn't hear him apologize for anything. I think this is his, this is Grinding Gear Games' way of stating, hey, 
Uh, heist didn't meet our internal expectations and we've been trying to fix that and here's how we're trying to pivot that for 313. You can take from that and make whatever interpretive moves you'd like. That's that's what that sounds like to me. So I should kill my first Cirrus this league if the end game changes again. Um so Shaper and Elder didn't go away. Right? Shaper and Elder didn't go away. They just they just became much more gated in order to access, right? They weren't an automatic progression to get them. So yeah, aim for Cirrus. You now have a you now have a league goal. Go kill Cirrus. Go do it. Go make it happen. All right, so let's pull up paint. I'm gonna I'm gonna be reading some quotes here from what from what Chris has said. So it seems like the intro is uh, Poe backgrounds. That's what that seems like, and then. Tra essentially transitioning from PoE background all the way back to, to when PoE was made. So like a, a 13 through 15 recap. And then there's like a 15 through 20 recap. saying uh this is the this the the dev cycle that we settled on and when it was working was 15 to 20. this is like a rocky start up here i think is what he's saying so we had kind of a rocky start kind of a hilly mountainy start let's draw some nice little mountains in here we'll just draw some happy little mountains Now what you want to do is you want to draw some happy little mountains. You, you just want to you want to you want to pretend to be a mountain. Now mountains have a lot of curves to them, don't they? Mountains have a lot have a lot of curves, and and they're not always going the same direction, right? So they're not always going the same direction. So you want to have some shadows here for your mountains, right? So it's a rocky start, right? The foothills, yeah, the foothills of Poe. Excellently said, Lime. And and so then we move from Poe background dev cycle that was working to 2020. A new cycle needed, right? That's kind of what he's saying. New cycle needed for tw uh, for for twenty twenty. So this this is this is his background that he gives. feature creep comes in they talk about feature he, he talks about feature creep but he talks about it in relationship to software developers he talks about it in relationship to the development of, of poe expansions and leagues i i almost feel as though just just looking this over feel free to push back guys if if i'm you know, if this is on YouTube, drop me a comment down below. If it's on Twitch, feel free to to make a, a live comment if I'm being too harsh here or if I'm being inaccurate. But it, it almost feels like, as I'm reading through this, it feels like their process used to be, hey, here's the timeline of a development cycle, right? With an arrow, we need an arrow over here, right? This is time, time keeps on ticking right and so you'll go like idea and then dev time dev time and then maybe an idea comes up again and then you'll you'll work on it in dev time and then and then another idea right and so wherever there's like wherever these there's these ideas we need to make an idea what's an idea like a light bulb is there a light bulb emoji in paint i don't think there is we're gonna use this we're gonna use a lightning bolt and we're gonna make it orange Bzz. right so here's like here's the the beginning of a league right Oops. Where there's ideas. So there's all these ideas coming in. There's ideas. And then there's actual work on them, right? Like there's the work on the idea, implementing the idea. So we're going to give a green star to wherever there's uh, 
wherever there's work being done on these ideas, right? So essentially what he's saying here is late in heist development cycle, we had a serious internal discussion about how we could restructure our development process so that the subsequent expansions are less risky. But, but what is the risk in what he's described? The risk is this feature creep and the scope of the scope of each league. Essentially they've said, Hey, whenever they come up with an idea, Whenever this happens, whenever anybody's got, oh, we've got the, the thought bubble. Whenever anybody's got like an idea for a league and then they, they run with it, it seems like people are allowed to have more ideas along the way. And what Chris is saying, again, feel free to push back if I'm, if you feel like I'm being disingenuous or not, not being accurate. It feels like they're saying, hey, you can, we, we're going to develop Path of Exile with an idea. But what we've done is people have iterated on that idea while we've been working live on the league and testing it. And then here's launch day. Launch day rolls around. Where is it? Launch day comes. Here's, here's where we'll say launch day comes. And, and we try to have all this stuff done before launch day. But what's happened with Heist is almost that we've had to continually do this stuff because of lots of factors. So where we've had problems and ideas and solutions and testing and the new releases of stuff like bosses, like changing in content, like changing in the alarm system, changing in a lot of core mechanics. So it, it's almost like, hey, because of this, because with each new idea, there's more work to test it and there's more work to actually make it work in the game, that there's not a very clear cycle that looks like this a very very clear decisive development cycle that just goes hey we've got an idea yeah you got an idea all right does anybody else have any ideas yeah i've got ideas okay do them now and what we're going to do is we're going to have an idea cut off so if the league is due in december we're going to have a september league idea cutoff date and if you've got ideas for the league after september too bad we're not doing them too bad because what we're going to do from here on out is we're going to do this. We're going to work on all of those ideas. And we're going to have this thing ready to go as a, as a complete league for when, when drop day comes. So we're, we're not going to do any of this, any of these bubbles. Any of these bubbles? Any new ideas? Any of these new ideas? You can just save them for later. Use them for a later league, man. Save them for later. Right? Save for later. Like, if you've got ideas for this league, too bad. Just save it for later. This appears to be... This appears to be the model that has existed at Grinding Gear Games. And this appears to be what they're saying we're going to move to. Let's get all of our ideas on the table and then let's work on implementing them until we've got release. That's what I would take away from Chris's post. Feel free to drop us a comment. Make sure that you like, subscribe, and ding the bell. And then come on over and follow us on Twitch and all that great stuff. Big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. Thanks so much for joining us for today's discussion. I would love to hear your thoughts down below in the comments. And I hope today is the day that a Mirror of Calandra drops for you. Thanks for watching that video. If you'd like more information on any of our discussion points today, you can see them down below in the video description. If you'd also like to join our Discord or support our Patreon, you can do so with the links down below. Thanks again and big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters.